After we got Kitty Wake's hull nice and clean, we waited in San Vicente de la Barquera for a good weather window to head west. San Vicente de la Barquera is a little village with just over 4,000 inhabitants in the Cantabria region of northern Spain. The town became an important part of the Camino de Santiago de Compostela in medieval times. We enjoyed walking around the old walls and castles. The winds we needed to sail west showed up in mid-August, so we set sail to reach new anchorages. We've really enjoyed our um, time cruising in North Spain. We stayed at some really cool little ports and some nice places in like cities. Bilbao was really nice, Santander was really nice, El Anchove was really nice. It's all been like great. But there's been a couple of little things which have been a little bit frustrating. One is because we've been staying in harbours haven't really been able to swim and snorkel as much or at least not as easily so we haven't really done as much of that as we'd like to compared to the French islands which were obviously islands in the middle of the ocean where it was really nice just the swimming and that's a bit cold Spain hasn't been quite the same the other slightly frustrating thing is the winds which since we've been here have been very predominantly from the northwest and because we're travelling west, we, we really need winds to be kind of in the eastern half. So coming from the east to push us westwards. When there has been easterly winds, they've been very light and only for a few hours at a time, which haven't really been enough to push us along very well. So we've only done 80 nautical miles in the month that we've been here. Which is why today we're trying to push on a bit more and sail a bit further to try and make use of the easterly winds which are forecast for the next couple of days. We're just by Yuri Barizella and the wind is still really light. We're still on the spinnaker and doing around three and a half knots. And that's been our average for the past few hours as well, which is better than most days we've had in the north coast of Spain. We've seen uh, some amazing tuna jumping earlier. So it was quite far off, so we couldn't get it on the camera. but. I saw at least two tunas jumping out of the water and doing massive splashes uh, and then on the binoculars I could see there were fish jumping out of the water to avoid getting caught. Um, it was really cool, it felt like being in a, in a nature documentary.
Sailing down this bit of coast was incredible. We had the Picos de Europa and the Sierra de Ancares mountains in view most of the time, which was stunning. After a lovely day of sailing in light winds under Spinnaker, we sailed into a clear night on the climax of the Perseid meteor shower, which is an annual meteor shower which happens at this time of year. It's amazing out there. I've seen 17 shooting stars. I just wish I could film it. It's just incredible. I've seen the biggest better ever. I don't think I've ever seen as many shooting stars in my life. We had a great night sail. We did about 95 nautical miles total since we left yesterday, so excellent progress. Uh, the night was really easy. We saw tons of shooting stars, which was great. And then we drive the spinner car at the change of watch around 3 a.m. That was really easy too. Um, neither of us got much sleep. I was too excited from the shooting stars to fall asleep, but it was great. And we might start this afternoon around 6 p.m. Um, at uh, Ria de Ribadero um, because we don't want to skip too much of northern Spain. So the wind picked up and we put the spinnaker down and we've got only the Genoa on but we're doing more than 5 knots which is pretty great. We should be at our destination in no time. Rien de nouveau sous la lune, je m'étends sur ma fortune De rire et de pacotille et des souvenirs qui brillent. Vole avec moi sur les aiguilles des grands sapins au pied des nuages. In the afternoon, we reached our destination, Ribadeo. We headed straight towards the entrance to the river estuary, which was marked by a channel under a long bridge. It felt great to sail under the bridge as the wind and waves calmed down. In the anchorage, there were shifting sands, and we ended up grounding, driving the bows into the sands for just a second. This is because we were relying on the chart plotter a little too much. It was no big deal, we had just reversed out of it and used eyeball navigation to find a good spot to drop the hook. There's a saying that goes, only two types of sailor never ran aground. One never left port and the other was an atrocious liar. We're glad we got running aground out of the way. Whilst Ribadeo looked lovely, we still wanted to press on as it was getting late in the season. So we left the next morning to head west. As we left Ribadeo, it was nice and calm. The sea was flat and we saw tuna jumping again. As we got nearer to Viveiro, the winds increased a lot and were right on our nose. We ummed and ahed about going back and in hindsight, it would have been better to turn back. It was slow going, but we made it into the anchorage just before dark. Ribeiro is home to several Romanesque historical buildings and the old town is well preserved. The bridge over the river Landro dates back to the medieval era. 
The town used to be surrounded by a wall which protected the inhabitants from attacks and the plague. Only a few parts of it remain today. Viveiro is the oldest carnival in Galicia. Unfortunately, we visited at the wrong time of year. However, we found lots of decorations around town which we thought were for the celebration of their patron saint. So we're up early to head to Santa Marta de Ortigueira. It's um, a really well sheltered rear, which is good because there's some strong winds forecast. And um, it's a really nice looking rear, recommended by our friend John, who has her heavenly twins. So we're excited to get down there. arrived into Ortigueira, we moored up against the old fishing boat quay. We explored the town for a while, then went to ask the marinero how much it would be to use the marina, as there were strong winds forecast. He laughed and explained that he can't charge us for it, as it's a council-owned marina, so we decided to head in for our first ever marina berth. We prepared the boat on the way and got our fenders ready. Neither of us had done much close water manoeuvring with Kitty Wake before, so we were a bit nervous, which turned out to be right as we balls it up a bit. We should really have waited until it was completely calm rather than going in when it was a bit windy. As we turned into the berth, the wind caught the boat and Ryan had to leap onto the tiny finger pontoon to try and pull the boat into the slot. Our boat swung round towards the big power catamaran in the berth next to ours but luckily our little boat is light enough that we could manhandle her into place with the help of a nice local. Thanks a lot for watching this episode. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us. You can also follow our journey through our Facebook and Instagram accounts. And if you'd like to support the making of these videos, you can do so on Patreon. We'd like to give a special thanks to our new patron, Alouette Osborne. Cheers!